On November 8, 2016, many voters in Massachusetts town, including Blackstone and Millville, voted to legalize recreational marijuana. Research has shown that when teens believe marijuana is not harmful, use of the drug goes up. Many teens do not consider marijuana to be a harmful drug. Some believe this because it's natural, but not all natural plants are good for you. Take tobacco, for example. Do you think marijuana is harmless? My classmates and I learned about this drug, and now we understand that legal does not mean safe. We would like to share this information with you. Make an informed decision about whether you'll ever use marijuana. Learn all you can about it. The law allows the use of up to one ounce in public by people 21 years or older, but it is illegal to operate a vehicle under the influence of marijuana. In Massachusetts, the first offense for possession of more than one ounce is a misdemeanor and you could serve up to six months in jail and be fined up to $500. Think about what that might do to your future plans. The main active chemical in marijuana is THC. When someone smokes marijuana, the THC goes from the lungs into the bloodstream. From there, it ends up in the brain and other organs. THC stimulates brain cells to release a chemical, dopamine, which creates the feeling of pleasure. This effect is partly responsible for the high a person feels when he or she smokes marijuana. It is one of the main reasons people use marijuana again and again, which can lead to addiction. If you smoke marijuana for a long time, the THC gets into your brain rapidly and attaches to the cannabinoid receptors. When that happens, you, your brain no longer produces natural dopamine. That means you can't feel excited without smoking weed. When THC connects with the part of the brain that is responsible for thinking, memory, and concentration, it can cause unwanted side effects including difficulty thinking, problem solving, and problems with learning. THC also affects attention, impairing your ability to do complex tasks that require focus and concentration. These effects can last even after the high is long gone, especially for frequent marijuana users and that can make it harder for them to do well in school. Let's say you've made honor roll every quarter of your middle school experience and now you're in high school. Your friends smoke weed because they believe it's harmless and somehow they convinced you to start smoking with them. How do you think your grades will be if smoking with your friends becomes a regular thing? Imagine if the New England Patriots smoked weed before their games. They would get fined, suspended, or benched and hurt their careers. Marijuana can affect coordination, perception, and slow reaction time. It can negatively affect your performance in athletics. Because weed impairs judgment, motor coordination, reaction time, it is no surprise that research has found a direct relationship between blood THC levels and impaired driving. So if you smoked weed and are thinking of getting behind the wheel of a car, think again. Driving with marijuana in your system is a risky move. Once you smoke the pot, there's no going back. So think before you make your decision. If you ever find yourself in that situation, call someone for a ride. One call can save your life or someone else's. THC enlarges blood vessels in the brain and lungs. It causes your heart rate to speed up while your blood pressure drops, causing stress to the body. Long-term marijuana use can cause you to lose everything you've worked for. THC, or Delta 9 tetrahydrocannabinol, can cause you to develop apathy and you won't be able to complete tasks. Your judgment will be impaired. Life is hard enough without adding marijuana into the mix. People who use marijuana for a while can have withdrawal symptoms when they try to give it up. Common symptoms include flu-like symptoms, lots of sweating, and chills. They may even feel irritable, anxious, or depressed. They may have trouble sleeping or not feel like eating. What do you think? Is marijuana addictive? This is what I've learned. Users can form a dependence and feel withdrawal symptoms when not using weed. Users, some users may get addicted and some may not. Is using worth the risk? There are many different factors that act to affect a person's chance of risk of addiction. Risk factors are things that increase the likelihood of you getting addicted to a drug. Some risk factors are having friends or family who use drugs, experimenting with drugs while your brain is still developing, mental health issues like depression. Knowing your risk factors can help you make healthy choices. The risk for marijuana addiction is almost doubled when people who's using marijuana as teens. Using weed daily increases the chance um, 25 to 50%. Scientists know that an important factor in addiction is a person's genes. They have identified some genes that are linked to addiction. If your family member struggles with addiction, you may be at greater risk. There are things called protective factors that help decrease a person's risk for addiction. Things such as strong family relationships, participation in after school activities, and having coping strategies to deal with stress can decrease a person's chances for addiction. Our goal in making this video was to give you reliable information so that you can make healthy choices for yourself, so that you can be your best self without drugs. Find your natural high, something that brings you happiness. What is your natural high? My natural high is running. My natural high is baseball and basketball. Mine is camping. 
Mine is biking. Mine is playing basketball. Mine's also playing basketball. Video games. Gymnastics. Roller skating. Dancing and skating. Basketball. Baseball. Hockey. Swimming. Playing soccer and basketball. Mine is soccer. Softball. Mine is playing sports. Running. Dancing. Soccer. Acting. Dance. Reading. Dancing. Gymnastics.